Hello, everyone, and welcome to the May 10th Council meeting of the Village of Lytton. I'd like to take a moment to remind everyone to turn off their video, mute their microphones, and allow Council to begin the proceedings. Just to let you know, we're all being recorded and broadcast in the Village of Lytton YouTube channel. If anyone is looking for a video recording of this meeting or past meeting, you can go to the Village YouTube channel and watch it there. Thank you very much. Mayor Connor. you may start the meeting. Thank you very much. So I call this meeting to order at seven o'clock. So to begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm here tonight um, at Centre Point with uh, Acting CAO Leslie Grew and Colin O'Leary um, on the territory of the Tkamloops Tshwetmik people. And of course, as I've said in the past, of course, we are here to discuss uh, the village of Lytton, which is, um, or have our meeting regarding the village of Lytton which is on the Entlacatan territory. So we'll start by adoption of the agenda, item number three. And can I please have a motion to adopt the agenda? So move, toss. Thank you, and second. I put, oh. Thank you. All those in favor? Yes. Carried. So now moving on to the adoption of the minutes, and that was our meeting that we held last week, uh, last Wednesday. I hope everybody had an opportunity to look them over. Uh, who would like to? Sorry, make... Mayor Connor, April 12th was the minutes. That was oh. the one we had a regular meeting. April 12th. I apologize. I should be looking at the date more, more carefully. Thank you very much. Uh, it wasn't last week, so you're right. Um, can I please have uh, somebody adopt? or make the motion. I so was on the <laughs> <laughs> so uh, made the motion to adopt the minutes <laughs> and a seconder, please. Toss. All second. Thank you, Councillor Toss. Are there any errors or omissions? I have a, a small one. Yes, Councillor Toss. It's, it's minor, but in the report to council under my name, um, that I attended the building charrette. I did not. Right. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Seeing none. All those in favor of adopting these minutes as amended? Mm -hmm. And carried. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have no business arising from the minutes or unfinished business. Um, item five. So we're going to move on to well, we have no delegations tonight. Uh, so we'll move on to item number seven, um, which is public comment. And I'm going to turn it back over to CO Ben. Thank you very much, Mayor Connor. <clears throat> Members of the public are now invited to comment on matters related to the agenda. If you'd like to speak, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. You can find that by clicking on reactions at the bottom of your screen and then clicking raise hand. When it's your turn, I will read your name and we will ask you to unmute yourself. You'll get a pop-up on your screen asking you to un unmute. You have two minutes to speak per speaker. Speaker must state, must state their name, address, and agenda item number. They're speaking for each comment. If anyone would like to speak, please use your raise hand function. Uh, Miss Peggy Shoot. Get to find her. Oh, there we are. Miss Shoot, you may go ahead. Thank you very much. You need to unmute. <laughs> Thank you. There you are. Thank you. I'm not a public speaker, so I feel very nervous. Oh, no, you're very welcome here. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to speak to Colin O'Leary's economic recovery report. I felt he certainly did capture that the center where the current location of the village had, or the services had been affects all the people living in the area. And though there may be different boundary jurisdictions, we are very important to each other. And I think you passed that message along. However, 
we all need the services and have been fortunate to have this bench of land to have them on quite cohesively. And I think of Lytton, having lived there for 66 years, what was good? Our, topog our topography only provides a number of benches of land that are suitable for certain things. And two subjects that I didn't see really emphasized in your report, though you mentioned green space and recreation, and of course, I can't forget pool. <laughs> so recreation has its place. And education on a green, and the green space where kids can play are so important. And we need to be able to look ahead to see where these items can be, which are easily accessible to all. And so I would, I would just like to encourage the council to look forward to developing the official community plan as more information comes together. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. <coughs> <clears throat> Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Please use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Anyone else? There are no other raised hands at this time, Mayor Connor. Thank you very much, uh, CEO Banman. Thank you very much. We'll move on then to item number eight, uh, staff reports and presentations. Um, 8.1.1, uh, we have a report, um, some information around the grant writer approval. And I think uh, CF <coughs> and Kev is going to speak to this. Thank you, Mayor O'Connor. Uh, good evening, everybody. This is a, uh, a request for uh, just approval to apply for a grant for the village of Lytton to hire a grant writer. <laughs> so it, it seems a little bit uh, redundant almost, but um, there, we have become aware of an opportunity through uh, NDIT for some funding um, for a position. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a small amount of the position. We wouldn't be hiring a full-time person. We would hire somebody on a contract to assist with, uh, with applying for some of the grants that are available through uh, UBCM and some organizations like that. So we have a person who can help us put the application together for the grant writer, and we're looking for approval to submit that. Thank you. Great, thank you. This, uh... Let's put the motion on the floor. Uh, Councillor Lightfoot, can you read it, please? I'll move that council direct staff to apply for a grant to the Northern Development Initiative Trust in the amount of up to $10,500 with $8,000, 76% funded through NDIT and $2,500, 24% funded from the village to fund a grant writer and that the village share be allocated from the general administration budget for 2023. Thank you. A seconder? I'll second that. I'll second. No. Uh, thank you, <laughs> Councillor McCann. So are there any comments or questions for uh, CFO uh, Mombercat? No. Seeing none. Um, all those in favor of this motion? Aye. Aye. And Aye. Carrie, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number 8.2, recovery manager. And I believe we have a verbal update tonight from Mike Blaschuk and Don Wong. So Mike, I will turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll, give you, uh, I'll give you an update on, as you just mentioned, verbal update on what we've been doing and, and the activities uh, uh, we've been, uh, certainly busy. Uh, right now we're working on finalizing a strategic uh, recovery plan that we need to file with EMCR to access our next uh, next phase of funding. Um, they're just waiting for that from us and, and it's proceeding very well. 
Um, we're getting ready to start shifting into the phase of, of now starting to get the services in place, the water, the sewer, um, getting ready so people who are applying permits uh, can build. So we have, uh, um, we're pleased to say we have uh, some engineering support coming from the city of Kamloops will be meeting with us on Monday and going through um, going through some of our plans and going through some of our, our anticipated actions. And it's going to inspect some of the areas for us and, and provide us some strategic advice on how best to, uh, to start bringing those services in and getting them functioning. We're very pleased they responded very quickly to our request. Um, we are also, tomorrow we'll be uh, down in Surrey. Um, the province of BC has offered us access to what's their asset um, uh, basically their asset disposal part of their organization um, to be able to secure furniture uh, and equipment um, that we can use to staff our temporary uh, recovery office and, and village hall. So we're uh, meeting with them tomorrow morning to go over there and see what we can uh, provide to get ourselves up and running as soon as possible in that area. Um, we're busy preparing for the May 19th and 20th symposium. Very happy to be there um, and in and, and we'll be able to bring people further up to date on, on our actions as well. Um, uh, they will, people will be able to find, I'm usually on the site office in the morning, in, right in the village afternoons. So uh, we're just setting up the recovery office in the planer mill uh, old office there. We've got the whiteboards up. People will be able to come in, drop in and see us as soon as we can put the sign up and say we're, we're fully open for business and uh, uh, meet the people and be able to look around and see on the walls everything we're planning, where the stage is, what are some of our challenges, issues. You'll be able to keep up to date um, really well. Um, we've been collaborating with as many government uh, agencies as we can to help us and I can Proud to say they're, they're all stepping forward. BC Assessment is helping us build, quickly build a database so we can track which sites have been cleaned, which sites have got archaeological sign off on them. Um, so we're getting uh, uh, all of that done. Uh, BC Hydro is active on the site, setting up the poles now. They've been doing the hydro backing. Um, and I saw today the last, I think, two poles going over to the parish hall, which will allow us to hook up uh, the parish and the church and we should be able to get, as soon as we can get that run over, we'll be, able, we'll be able to get that activated and turned on and be able to use by people. So um, it's been a busy week. Uh, we anticipate next week being an even busier week. Um, so that's my quick but short uh, update on what's happening with recovery. Thank you, Mike. Uh, council, does anyone have any questions or comments they'd like to make? No, no. Uh, Thank you so much, Mike. You guys have definitely been busy and uh, much appreciated. And we look forward to even hearing more reports. So thank you so much. Okay, so we'll move on to item number 8.3, uh, Economic Development Officer. And we have Colin O'Leary here in the, in the room tonight. <laughs> so I'll just turn it over to you, Colin. Thank you, Your Worship. And yeah. thank you, Council. I'm back to... Uh, present a slightly updated version of the report. We did find some very minor uh, tweaks, most almost entirely grammatical that we wanted to make sure that we captured. So the report is absolutely perfect. So we did uh, tweak the report very slightly. And so this is the updated report we want to bring forward with these uh, updates and revisions for council and make sure it's available to everybody online. Yeah. So Colin, I'll just Pipe in, Colin has provided an updated hard copy that I'll be bringing back to Lytton with me, um, Council, so you can all have a turn to look at it too. All right, so we have a recommended motion to adopt um, this, uh, this report. So who would like to read and make this motion? I'll make the motion. Thank you. That count that council receives and accepts the Lytton Regional Economic Recovery Plan and needs as presented at the May 10th, 2023 regular meeting of council. Great, um, a seconder, Councillor Lightfoot. Um, any questions for Colin or comments? I have a, a quick question and thank you, um, Colin. The um, May 19th and 20th event in Lytton, would that be somewhere that you think th this might fit in to present to the public or to show, or is that an appropriate? I think, 
I like, I think that would be absolutely excellent. I think the big thing with the report is that it, uh, I mean, it's ultimately, it's really what the community has said. And so I think it's, it's taking that information and making sure it's not lost and that it's uh, kind of the community's needs. And then, so the people, the more people that see it can then take it and possibly again, help to address some of those needs, different organizations. And so the more it's out there, the better, uh, I regret to, uh, tell you unfortunately that I would not be available there to present it because I am going to Williams Lake on a uh, field trip on a bus that I've arranged with a whole bunch of uh, Schwabnik knowledge keepers actually and that's been in months in the planning uh, so I will for the 17th and the 18th so I will not be able to make it in person unfortunately but please do bring it forward and the more use the better I would hate to see this thing just collect some dust honestly. Yeah. Okay, great. I think um, I'd like to request of, of staff to have a few hard copies of that available for that event. Great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Uh, Councillor McCann? I'm, I'm just running ahead now and enrolling future planning. So for the council to, to actually use this and make it a productive document, we would then go through it and look at some of those recommendations and determine which of those recommendations we want to bring back and perhaps have staff follow up. Is that the correct procedure to make something like this, do something other than collect dust? Yes, and you also can use it to apply for grants. That's why it's important to either accept or adopt it because then the provincial government or whoever you're applying for, you, you've now showed them you've done your due diligence and here it is. And to, su to support yeah. grants to support the work, right? So, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Any Still other? learning all. Good. Any other comments? So, all those in favor? Absolutely. And carried. Thank you very much. Now, thank you, Colin. Thank you very much. Yes. <clears throat> so, we'll move on to item number nine, um, 9.1. The developmental development approval procedures bylaw number 731. And we have um, Ron Dickinson and Beerty here tonight, I believe. So, who are we turning it over to? Ron. Well, I'll just uh, open it up because uh, Beerta has uh, a lot to add that um, in the detailed department and uh, so I just want to remember, remind council, we've, we've talked about this with you a couple of times in the past and uh, recent past. And um, of all the things that we may have mentioned in those meetings, I think the critical piece is that this is a, a very important tool to help us move forward with the development of uh, on private properties, because there will be a lot of uh, demand for variances and other types of development uh, approvals to put before council. And this is the, the vessel that they all have to fit into. And um, I, I wanna thank Birta and uh, Corey Gain for all the work they put into it, as you'll see as it goes along. It's, it's a comprehensive document, uh, but it will, it will concisely allow people to process and, and you and, and staff to process uh, requests like this. So it's an important document. And with that, I'll leave the discussions uh, to Birta. Thanks, Your Worship. Great, thank you, um, Ron. I think what we'll do is we'll put the motion on the floor and then we will uh, have any questions or comments if that, that works. And it's a two-part, uh, looks like a two-part motion, recommended motion. So who would like to? Meryl Connor, just one second. Oh, um, yes. Spirita, am I correct in saying that you have a presentation for the mayor? Oh, I apologize. Okay. okay. No problem. Yep. Thank you very much. Okay. Go ahead. Your Worship and Council, yes, we do have a presentation. Um, you will find that we do like to just bring everything together for you comprehensively. And um, it, this one's fairly short. So we, do, we are highlighting a few things in it. So I'm going to share my uh, presentation right now, if I may. Mm. Go ahead. Thank you. Goes. Hold on. I've got to press the right button now. It says I'm screen sharing, except for it's not. Spare with me a second here. There we go. Okay. okay. Now we have the right screen share. So um, good evening, uh, Council and Mayor. We are glad to be here again this evening. Um, let's just 
get both things organized here. So back to our COGS and the residents and all the bubbles that come together. Prior to the fire, uh, it appears that the village of Lytton did have a development approval procedure bylaw. However, as you know, it cannot be located. And we've been working on drafting the bylaw and ple are pleased to present it to you tonight for your consideration. I'm going to speak to the procedures bylaw and Corey's going to speak to a piece that's in there that is new. And a lot of the uh, other municipalities are just passing this as well. It is a, um, it's a delegated authority. And then Corey's also gonna to speak to the terms of reference for the professionals. So as per the slide here, Ooh, that's interesting, something strange just happened. As per the slide here, you see what we're looking at for that. And just to remind you, we're going back to the Local Government Act requirements. We've got the OCP at the top there. We've got the zoning bylaw. And obviously, the, out of those two, we do need to put together the procedures bylaw so that we can be in compliance with the Local Government Act. So the purpose is to allow applicants and staff, in this case, your planning team, to know the process for approvals as we move through, and those are in accordance to how you wish to do it. So um, just to, to let you know, since uh, we spoke with you at the council workshop, we've had two additional professional planners, Beyond Verta and myself, um, read through the bylaw, and um, we'd like to be able to give you assurance that uh, you know it meets current best practices. So you'll recognize the graphic from the policy and regulation framework you endorsed at the last meeting. And of course, in the interest of improving process efficiency, the planning team is recommending that you take advantage of those new delegations provided in the Local Government Act that allow um, additional application decisions to be delegated to staff. So we're going to go back to uh, a slide that we've shown you before. It's really the standard procedure for planning. And it is relatively standard because by the Local Government Act, there's a number of steps that we all need to follow. Um, this process, as we've gone through once before, you've read this list, and I know you've also got in your council package, we put the flow chart in that we had talked about, just so that you understand a detail of the roles and responsibilities and, and how everything flows together. One of the things that we discussed at the council workshop was the various options for the radiuses for notification. One of the things uh, we wanted to show you this one, obviously this is the downtown sector and 30 meters as you can see is just one block. We felt that that according to what we heard from you is a little bit narrow. We felt hundred is a bit broad. So mm -hmm. we've landed on 60 and that's the one that we put into the procedures bylaw. Obviously, okay. if that's not to your to your liking, we'd love to hear that. I'm just going to uh, qualify that for a moment. So all of the official community plan and zoning bylaw amendments would uh, be sent, notifications would be sent to all property owners in the village. The 60 meters applies to things like the development variance permits or things that impact the immediate um, area only. I think we talked about that distinction. So um, kind of in, in a little bit different take. And so that's very unique to your community. So to the delegation of technical DPs, it's a commonly used way to um, speed up the development process. So there are a number of development permit areas while suspended currently, they are contained in the official community plan and we will certainly be dealing with those in due course. But we're setting up the framework here so that when we've talked about the guidelines, we can bring the process into um, practice. So there will be technical DPs as we discussed at the workshop that would be handled by staff as they're based uh, almost entirely on um, technical reports from qualified professionals. And then we also have um, some minor development permits. So we have the, the revitalization um, uh, development permit area guidelines currently, which of course are the ones we're most concerned about revisiting, hazardous conditions, environmentally sensitive areas, and the wildfire interface. Very um, 
standard types of development permit areas. And in fact, the next thing that I need to talk to you about um, after the bylaw will be to respond a little bit to those development permit area guidelines. So it's a, a, a second tool to assist us in administering this bylaw. So the Local Government Act has recently made it possible to delegate um, certain development variance permit decisions um, to staff so that council doesn't have to see each and every application when they have had a discussion of what the appropriate um, measures are. So for example, if a variance is less than 10% of the bylaw regulation, um, council would very frequently pass that. So rather than bringing it to the council table and, and elongating the process, um, it's something that staff with the guidance provided in the bylaw um, can consider issuance of. If there's anything at all that makes the director uncomfortable, he always has the option of returning to council. And if someone is unhappy with the decision of a delegated authority, they also can return to council. So that's all set out in the bylaw. We're suggesting, based on some legal advice that I received in a, in a session shortly, a month or so ago, um, providing these guidelines. So if we provide notification to the surrounding property owners within 60 meters of the subject property, and we don't receive any correspondence in opposition, we think that's a pretty good sign that it, it, it's probably an acceptable decision to go ahead and, and deal with that as a delegated authority. The other occasion um, that would be an exception would be if it was for a bylaw enforcement investigation. Of course, that's not an issue for us this very moment because there's no buildings or structures to violate the bylaw in the future. Again, that is something that we need to take account of. So there's uh, the section of the act for those who might like to look it up is 498.1. And so it allows the issuance of a development uh, variance permit in respect of an application made for the defined type of development variance permit, and we're calling it minor. So the director can issue this permit when, in their opinion, it meets um, these provisions. So it result it doesn't it result in an inappropriate development of site or adversely impact the natural environment. It doesn't affect the use and enjoyment of adjacent lands. Um, and that, of course, always a development variance permit can never vary use or density. That's when you have to, to look to the zoning bylaw itself. So as long as the variance requested doesn't defeat the intent of the bylaw, um, then a permit can be issued. And that permit, once issued, is valid for two years. So construction in accordance with the permit must commence within two years. If it does not, the permit lapses, and then we start the application process once again. Generally, people don't apply for a development variance permit till they're ready to go. So it works out okay in most cases. So we recommend, uh, as I said, an additional tool to help us in administering this bylaw, and that's the terms of reference for professional reports and technical studies. This particular terms of reference has been reviewed um, by suitably qualified professionals in various jurisdictions, and in fact, recently had some updates because we uh, had the benefit of uh, some expertise from the environmental registered environmental professional or registered biologist. And so we're feeling very good uh, about these being good guidelines for you to um, use to help you um, guide decisions as well, because we're talking about delegating those technical permits. We wanna make sure that the professionals have really um, well-grounded guidelines to be providing reports. So you, you can be assured that the quality of information is there, that it meets the objectives of um, communities 
um, growth and uh, just as it is basically respectful of, of what you want to see moving forward. So these, all of these things, uh, the administrative procedures and whatnot to activate the development approval procedures bylaw, we imagine putting into what we're calling a planning operations manual so that when we get to the end of the day, we have a binder that we can hand to another um, staff member that will allow them to continue with administration of the process moving forward. And of course, anytime we find there are needs for adjustments, we can revisit the bylaw and or make adjustments to the administrative processes. So at this point, it'll be us, the extended planning team, who uh, starts the, moving through the process and hopefully we'll have it all nice and fine tuned um, by the time uh, we're ready to move on. One of the things that you will see um, coming out of this that we heard specific mention of was um, making sure that we knew exactly what to do with the contaminated site disclosure and the archeological sites issues. So we're, we're very alive to those things and they can be handled in, in administrative procedures. So um, you don't need to worry about those in the bylaw. So that concludes our comments for this presentation. We're obviously open to any questions or anything that we can add. Are there any questions from council? Oh, there we go. Councillor Toss. Hi there. Thank you so much for your work on, on this. Um, I have a question around the two years to commence. How long do they have, um, does a proponent have to conclude the building? And I apologize if, if, if I've missed that. That's okay. Um, actually, once, once they commence construction, it falls to the building permit process. And so it's like we pass the baton to the building folks and they carry it from there. So as long as they have substantially commenced, um, then they may use that that variance. Otherwise, it, it needs to be revisited. And the intention here is that somebody doesn't get an approval now and not do it for 10 years when conditions have changed and maybe a different decision would be you know, made. Thank you. Great, thank you. Councillor Lightfoot, did I see your hand up? Yes, and, and it was, um... I'm trying to find it in under the terms of reference, but I do believe under the terms of reference, under professional standards on page two, it talks about um, these consultants should have extensive experience in the Okanagan region. And I'm just wondering if that's- um, I apologize, necessary. I did not catch that. Yeah, right here. We, so, we'll, we will see in the interior region would be a more appropriate in the Okanagan. Or even just extensive because um, in Lytton, we may draw from the coast or from um, Squamish actually, or the TNR. But um, as long as they're professional, I guess we don't care, right? Well, for the most part. <laughs> yes, yes. As long as they're professional yes. and have their professional standing, we will accept their work. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Lightfoot. I, I noticed that as well. So thank you. Um, are there, uh, Councillor McCann, did you have a question? No. All right. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your for that presentation. And uh, what we'll do is we will put the the recommended motion uh, forward. So who would like to do that? I'll read that. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Uh, I'd like to move that council consider giving first, second, and third readings to development approval procedures bylaw number 731-2023, and that the terms of reference for professional reports and technical studies be adopted. And a seconder. Seconded, Toss. Thank you. And all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Great, did I see your, thank you, and carried. So thank you so much, uh, Bertie. Okay, we'll move on to item 9.2, and this is regarding the financial plan bylaw, 
And I'm going to turn it now to um, CFO Diane Malbriquet. Thank you again, Mayor O'Connor. And I wasn't planning on making any more comments on this. We've been through it a couple of times and we did uh, the first three readings last week. So I'll, uh, I'll just leave it at that. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, we have a recommended motion here, Councillor Lightfoot. I'll move that council adopt the 2023 to 2027 financial plan bylaw number 732, 2023. And a seconder. Seconded, Toss. Thank you. And I'm assuming there are no questions for CFO member Kat, but maybe there is. Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Carried. And we'll move on to item 9.3. And this is the annual tax rates. And so uh, would you like to speak to this? CFO? Well, all I, all I was just gonna say is now that we've passed the financial plan, um, adopted that bylaw, we're now in a position to consider the tax rates for the current year. And we did, uh, we did do a little, uh, I did a presentation on this last week, just to bring everyone up to speed on where we were at. I just wanted to point out that in our bylaw, the only tax rates that we include um, is the Village of Lytton tax rate and then the tax rates that we collect on behalf of the TNRD. And the reason for that is in the case of both the TNRD and the, TN the hospital, they provide us with a dollar amount and then we, we set a tax rate in order to collect those dollars with all of the other ones, we're just given the rates. So those organizations pass their own bylaws to come up with those rates and just give them to us. So we don't need to pass them again. So in the bylaw, in the in the appendix, you'll just see the three rates listed there um, for, for council. So that was all I wanted to just add to that. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, who would like to uh, read and make this motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that council give the first three readings to the 2023 annual tax rates bylaw. Great. And I'll, uh, sorry, seconder. <laughs> oh. Councillor Lightfoot and all those in favor. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Carried. Yeah. It's, uh, it's interesting when, uh, you know, you guys do it at the same time, right? Who do you choose? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to item number 10, correspondence. And I be don't believe we have any correspondence this evening. So item number 11 is uh, verbal reports. And, you know, I sat down to write my report to, uh, and realized that the meeting, uh, the last council me meeting we had was just last week, right? It feels like it's been weeks since then. Um, but as many of you know, I've been I've been busy with some personal um, business as well. But I, I so I don't have a lot to report tonight. I've had some uh, meetings with IHA, um, some other kinds of phone meetings and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, the week was long, yet it was short. So um, I'm just going to leave it at that for tonight. I'll just move on to Councillor Toss. Thank you, Mayor O'Connor. Um, I do not have a lot to report. Um, in fact, nothing aside from speaking with residents and um, working behind the scenes, supporting Councillor McCann and Patrick Michelle with the symposium and that team, although I haven't been able to help as much as I'd like. But um, yeah, it's been it's been a busy week, but it, it went fast. Yeah, that's, that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Oh, I've got mine all written just just because I'm such a good counselor this week. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, it was lots of stuff. Busy week, like everyone else has said. Uh, since our last meeting, I went um, on Thursday. I joined uh, Mayor O'Connor at this swearing-in ceremony and dinner for the newly elected LFN chief and council. It was a kind of emotional evening acknowledging Chief Janet Webster's long service to her community, 34 years of service to the band, 10 as a counselor and 24 as chief. Uh -huh. She's the, the longest serving woman chief in the interior of BC, we learned that night. So 
it was, it was nice to be there and to, to say thank you to Chief Janet. Um, Friday, there was a Zoom meeting that I attended um, with a number of representatives from the region. And it was just fascinating because there was all these people to do with interior health. And a lot of them were from Kelowna. Basically the discussion that I know that I recall anyways, focused on the temporary interior health facility that's planned for opening in August. So we got to see the floor plan, got to discuss some, some of the, um, um, the things that are gonna be offered to people in that building and the concerns so people could take that away and respond to that a bit. It was, it was a nice opportunity to have input. On Monday morning, uh, May the 8th, I joined a group including recovery manager Mike, consultants Linda Pringle and Christina Walkton, landscape architects with LA West Associates, their geotech consultants, Johnny Hogan, and Father Darren Bell, the newly appointed priest of Lytton and Lowett, for an on-site visit at the location of the Chief Spintlam Memorial Park, what most of us know as the area around the parish hall. And it was really awesome to be part of this group who are working so hard to complete the project. It has been on the drawing board for many years. So these people have got a grant and they have a deadline. And so our job as council is to help facilitate them getting what they need to, to finish this project uh, in the time that they have and get the money spent before their deadline, which I think is September. So it's, um, it was really cool. And the marmots were just wonderful watching us the whole time. Like they're not used to having people around it, I don't think. Uh, the second interior health engagement session is coming up on Monday. I just wanted to remind people of that, that it is uh, at from four till seven once again at the Stein Valley gym. Um, there's also paper input forms available at the health office and around town and online, you can download them. So um, as many residents as possible are encouraged to fill in that form and get their opinions in writing to Interior Health. If there's something that you want that you think we can't lose, then please, it is good that they hear it over and over and over again, better than just once, right? The more that we tell them that what we want, the better that is for us to actually get what we're looking for in our new building. Uh, the symposium, as Councillor Toss said, is coming along really nicely. It's going to be uh, an awesome event. I think I'm really looking forward. And I would like to just mention that one of the, part of the conversation today was that Patrick is hoping that mayor and council will be able to attend in person and maybe um, just let me know if there's some time that's better for you as council to, to be at the school on the 19th and 20th because we have a couple of jobs lined up for council members and I appreciate hearing from you about that. So uh, thank you, everyone. That's my report. Thank you, Councillor McCann. Councillor Michelle? Um, this week, I don't really have much to report. It it went by fast. I'm definitely looking forward to the to the symposium, and I will try to be there both days. Um, yeah, and uh, just to repeat what Councillor McCann said, if everybody could fill out those engagement questionnaire survey, whatever it's called, from Interior Health, stating that we want at least what we had back that would be best and that's it thank you thank you councillor lightfoot i really don't have a lot to report although i have committed to attending the building symposium and i'm looking forward to it i think it'll be a great weekend and um the may day or litton day committee has got a full agenda for that weekend and i know Cumsheen raft is um, celebrating 50 years i believe it is Mm -hmm. So it should be a busy weekend. Um, personally, um, we're on the Walk the Bridge exercise program on the west side now. And I have to say the parking lot down by the tracks is stuffed. Um, Public Works or someone in our organization um, put a few benches and um, 
garbage containers around so there's a place to rest but I'm not sure how long it'll last but um like I said it's our exercise program for for a while so um I plan to go to the interior health um committee on Monday I believe that's a pretty busy day for all of us so um, I'm planning on a full day and uh, I'll make sure to make my comments and as everyone else said I, I encourage everyone else to um, let them know what what we want. I don't think it's um, too hard um, actually to express and comprehend what we want. Um, personally, everything we had plus. Um, anyway, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lightfoot. Okay, item number 12, other business. And I'm going to turn it over to um, CIO Leslie Group. Thank you, um, Mayor O'Connor and, um, and the rest of council. So over the past few days, I've had the opportunity to speak to staff, um, the mayor, um, and I have done a preliminary review of what's been happening and have seen the skill set of the recovery team that the council has put in place. And I'm really impressed. <clears throat> the staff complimented the village as well. And I've provided recommendations uh, to the matter of the CAO position to mayor and council for consideration. I will be honored to support the council as an advisor on council matters where they may need to reach out. Um, and, and I'd like to thank the council for considering me for the position, but I respectfully will um, not be accepting it. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, uh, Leslie. Um, so, Leslie has been here all week um, and sort of um, to take the lay of the land, right? To, 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 uh, to yeah, and um, we really appreciate you considering it and thinking about it and, and, and uh, we look forward to working with you in other ways, you know, as, as the you. future unfolds, right? And, but thank you, yeah. okay. All right, um, I guess that brings us to the end of this uh, open meeting. I don't think we have anything on the agenda for a closed meeting. And so we're going to adjourn. Um, can I please have a motion from council to adjourn tonight's meeting? Councillor McCann. <laughs> Always ready to adjourn, Mayor O'Connor. I was so moved that we adjourned. Thank you. And a seconder. Lightfoot. Thank you. All those in favor. We don't need to do that part. Thank you. We're just adjourned. Yeah. Thank okay. you, everyone. Thank